Hey guys, this is Francesca from Under the Covers and this is my February wrap up video. I have 20 books to tell you guys about today. I probably won't go into details on all of them, um, but I will give you the ratings of everything that I read. 20 books is really, really good for the month of February. Obviously, it's a shorter month. There's a lot going on and I'm really happy that I managed to get a lot of books read. I pretty much got everything from my original February TBR video read except one which was Tumble, and I will be reading that shortly. But everything else that I had set myself to read for the month of February, I accomplished. I read all the books that I wanted to read for Romanzopoli, which I will be talking in detail on those. So overall, I'm pretty happy with my numbers and with my reading for the month of February. But let's talk about some stats. I have my reading journal here, and I will tell you what my numbers and stats and that kind of stuff were for the month of February. So like I said, it was a total of 20 books. That accounted for 6,626 pages. My most read genre was contemporary romance, and my average rating was 3.5 stars. I reread two books, one full length and one novella. The novella was a total accident. I read two from Kindle Unlimited and one from Audible Romance, so I'm doing sort of okay with my subscription packages and the goals that I set for myself on that. I read a total of seven audiobooks and 13 ebooks. For my challenges, I did five for the Tackle the TBR challenge and I did four for Romanceopoly. I will give you guys some of my favorites in terms of like the books that stand out the most. For my favorite book of the month, it was What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon. I loved and adored that book. I'll tell you guys more about it in a little bit. My favorite couple was From No Rest for the Wicked by Cressley Cole. My favorite hero was From the Risk by Elle Kennedy. My favorite heroine was From Polaris Rising by Jesse Mihalik. My biggest letdown was The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovich. The first one that I read was Polaris Rising by Jesse Mihalik. I think I had mentioned to you guys that I was already um, in the middle of reading that towards the end of January and it was really a book that surprised me. It's a sci-fi with a heavy side plot of romance and it is sort of a royal princess that is being forced in a way to marry somebody for political reasons. She decides to run away because she doesn't want to be forced into a marriage that with somebody she doesn't love and while she's running away she meets um, a guy that is sort of a felon and one of the universe or universes most wanted and he ends up helping her to escape from her actual fiance there's quite a bit of political intrigue in this story i loved the actual sci-fi elements of it and that is usually something that i struggle with but i think this book did it in a way that it's the ones that I'm most receptive to. There were no aliens or anything crazy about the sci-fi part of the story. It was just space travel and politics and royalty and all this political intrigue. And I love that aspect of it, but I also really love the main protagonist of the story. And this is actually, I think it's probably more of a romance because the next book will be about a different couple. So the next book will be about the sister of the heroine in this book. I do hope that we get to see more of this heroine as well, but I am really excited for the next one because it's also a heroine that seems very strong-willed and I can't wait to see what happens with that one. So I think this is definitely a series to look out for. It has a very urban fantasy feel to it, even though it's sci-fi, so it is set in space. But the types of characters and the scenarios that you'll find feels very easy for somebody that likes urban fantasy to jump right into it. And for somebody that wants romance, it has plenty of that. So I really enjoyed that one. I rated it four stars. My review is already posted on the blog as well if you want to check it out. The next book that I read was Glory and Death by J.D. Robb. I rated this four stars and probably I liked it a little bit, little tiny bit less than the first book in the series. Obviously that still means that I really enjoyed it. I still gave it a high rating. I still love Even Rourke. Um, I think in a way the mystery aspect was, I think it was obvious, but at the same time my brain kept telling me that it shouldn't be that obvious, so I kept trying to find other 
options for what could be happening or who could have done it and I don't know if that just has to be with the mindset that I was in when I was reading this book or if it has to do with the writing but I like the mystery part of this book more than in the first one. I found in the first one it was very very obvious and I had it figured out, never doubted it and in this one I had more of a doubt and then with even Rourke I thought it was very well done in the sense that I liked seeing them go through some issues because it felt realistic but at the same time it didn't have that instant intense connection that I felt in the first book and these are very minor changes from the first one because like I said I still really enjoyed it and I'm definitely looking forward to reading the next book. The next book that I read was Reft by Samantha Tao. I rated this 3.5 stars and this is the first book in the Reft series. It has a race car driver hero and the heroine is actually a mechanic so she is coming to be part of the team that's working for the hero and the hero has a really bad boy reputation. He pretty much sleeps with every woman in sight. She's very beautiful but she wants to be taken seriously in her profession which is also something she struggles with and another thing that she struggles with is the fact that her father was a very famous race car driver and she doesn't want anybody to know and she wants people to know that she's there of her own merits as opposed to who her father was. I like this one because it had a lot of friendship elements they obviously could not be together because of all the professional situations going on and I think that allowed them to form a strong friendship first and then become more so I really like that aspect of it I also like that they were going all over the place all over the world with the racing circuit that made it a little bit more interesting I think that I wish it would have been explored just a tiny bit more however I do think that I like Samantha Tao's writing and I'll definitely be reading more from her for sure I will be finishing this series and reading the second one next we have The Risk by L. Kennedy I rated this four stars although I had this impulse as soon as I finished reading it to give it 4.5 but I ended up going with a four. I think that I liked it just as much as the first one. I don't think that I like one more than the other. Um, however, I do really love this pairing in particular. I think that they were so perfect for each other. Jake is definitely book boyfriend material. He's really sweet and swoon worthy. And I think he was the perfect complement to Brenna's personality and he was the right Piece to help her overcome some of her past issues. I really liked how the author handled those. I don't want to get into what is going on in the past with Brenna, but a lot of the way that she acts today and the way she interacts with other people, especially her relationship with her father, it definitely stems from that. But it was really nice to see her be able to communicate more with her father especially and open up about the things that she has been holding on to for a really long time and maybe letting go of some of that guilt. I think one of the things that I really enjoy about this series and which is a spin-off of the Off Campus but the new adult books in general that L. Kennedy writes are full of real emotion and I think that that makes the characters feel that more real and natural and helps you connect with them. So it's definitely another one that I would highly recommend. So next up is my biggest letdown of the month which was The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovich and I had put this down as my Romansopoly pick for LGBT Lane which was a new adult LGBT romance and I picked this up because it has so much hype and I've been wanting to read it for a really long time. It's been recommended to me by people that I generally trust their opinions and then I started reading this and there were just too many things that I didn't connect with. Um, to put it nicely, I didn't really think that the writing was all that great. It really read like it needed a lot of editing. So while that was problem number one, I think the biggest thing for me was that I didn't really connect with any of the characters. I didn't end up caring for any of them. Um, I don't want to know more about what happens to any of them. And to me, that is probably the biggest thing that I didn't enjoy. Um, I could go into detail on things about the plot that I also didn't love too much but or also maybe the fact that you have to suspend your belief in this one and I just couldn't do it. 
for this particular book I found myself rolling my eyes quite a bit but also the thing that annoyed me the most was the fact that I was expecting some kind of romance and I was not aware that the romance in this series doesn't happen until like book three and which is why I put it down for my LGBT lane and I had to read a different book for it because there was absolutely zero romance in this one which would have been fine if there would have been some kind of hint of something that could happen some kind of tension something anything I don't know and there was absolutely nothing between any of the characters so I was kind of disappointed about that probably I would have felt differently had I read some reviews and had I known that that was the case and if I had known that was the case I probably wouldn't have read it um, this month and especially using it for romance hopefully so I had to read a different book because that one was not a good one and definitely did not fit the challenge now will I continue reading the series I probably will give book two a try and seeing how I feel about anything developing further it probably won't be anytime soon though so since that one didn't work out for me for LGBT Lane, what I ended up reading for Romance Happily for that was The Next Competitor by Kira Andrews. This was actually a figure skating athlete kind of romance and they, it is new adult and it is male male. I really enjoyed this one. It was also a recommendation from a friend of mine and it definitely hit the spot with what I was looking for. So one of the main characters is actually a singles figure skater and he definitely wants to make it to the Olympics. He's very driven, he's also very mouthy and he can get in trouble a lot with the press. And he can also come off as a bit of an asshole. He ends up developing a relationship with a couples figure skater. It was sort of the straight laced kind of guy that he didn't think he would do anything fun. He was always judging him and I thought they really worked really well. They were really adorable together. One of them is a virgin hero. It was just really sweet. It had quite a bit of the sport also, so I liked that aspect of it. It included the sport in a way that felt like it made sense for the story. So it wasn't just brushing it off like, oh, well, this is what I do, but that's not what the story was about. It was really woven into the plot very well. And I think for sure I will be reading more books by this author in the future. The next one was Ruthless King by Maya Hughes. This is the third book in the Kings of Rittenhouse series. I probably will go off reading this series. I was really highly anticipating reading this particular book because it's the couple that we've sort of known about since the very beginning and they were together in high school and something happened. We were not 100% sure what, but this, is, this was going to be a second chance romance. And I just didn't like how the author did that and that doesn't mean that the book wasn't all enjoyable I still rated it three stars but it was not done in a way that I enjoyed it it had quite a bit of miscommunication which is probably one of my least favorite things and that was both in what happened to them in the past and also in current times and when they're coming back together and obviously there's more drama going on so there was quite a bit of miscommunication I think that it was very cliche. I feel like it's been a while since this series has really hooked me, so I probably will take a break for a little while. The next one was The Beast's Heart by Leif Shalcross, and this was a Beauty and the Beast retelling told from the Beast's point of view, and I thought I was going to really enjoy this one, and I started reading it. I probably got to about, I can't remember if it was 20% or 30%. I just couldn't do it. I didn't really care for the story, I didn't really connect with the author's writing, and I DNF'd it. The next one was Maybe This Time by Jennifer Snow, and this is part of the Colorado Ice series. I have read, I think, book four in this series, which was a Christmas book. I found it a couple of years ago. I really enjoyed it. I told myself I will go back and read the series. So this is actually book one. So this is me going back and starting the series. This one I actually really enjoyed. The heroine is divorced and she's coming back to her small town after that. She's not quite divorced. She is at the end of her divorce and she has a teenage daughter um, she was married to a hockey player. He was also from that small town. They started dating when they were in high school and 
he cheated on her. He became not the nicest guy. And she comes back to town. Her daughter starts school and the hero of the story is actually the high school coach, the high school hockey coach. And he used to be best friends with the heroine's ex-husband. And he also had a crush on her since they were little kids, except he never really acted on it and he acted more like he didn't like her. This is him getting that second chance at having a chance with her. So I really liked the story. It was really sweet. I thought that he was really adorable because it was almost like he's a grown man, but he was acting like that high school kid that has a crush on the girl and doesn't know how to act around her. So it was really sweet and I definitely need to read more contemporary romances by Jennifer Snow. So then we get to my favorite book of the month, which was What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon. This is a time travel romance. So when the book starts out, the heroine's grandfather is dying. He opens up to her about a lot of things that he never told her from about their past and their family history. And he makes her promise that she's going to go back to Ireland to spread his ashes. Of course, after he passes away, she plans that trip. She goes to Ireland and while spreading her grandfather's ashes, she accidentally travels back in time to the 1920s. And now she looks exactly like her grandfather's mother. So in appearances, once she travels back in time, everybody there believes that that is her coming back, um, where they believe that she had been dead, but they never found her body. Some of the things in this story could be a little bit of magical realism as well, and I really enjoyed how it connected the past and the future, and how it connected the two timelines, and in a way it's sort of like it's coming full circle. So I really enjoyed that aspect, but it also has a really sweet and adorable romance. It has one of those really understated heroes where he's just a really nice guy, and he was definitely so easy to fall in love with. But what I really love is Amy Harmon's writing. I think that she can write any story and make you fall in love with that story. It was heartfelt, it was emotional, it was romantic, and also I really adored the relationship that the heroine has with her grandfather in both timelines. It was really special. I really liked how basically the whole book comes full circle probably many times over and it was really nice to see that some of the connections that you can make from the things that they set to each other in the present and then how that connects to their past and it was just really beautiful to see. I think that if you're a fan of stories like Outlander it probably would be a perfect read. I recommend Amy Harmon's books to anybody whether you're looking for something that is strict historical fiction or you are looking for something that has romance. I do admit this book made me shed many, 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 many tears, but it was definitely well worth it. And in case I didn't mention it, that was my five star read of the month. So for Romanceopoly, I also read my mystery challenge book and I went with Guardians Bond by Rena Morgan. This is a shifter romance and it's the first in the Ancient Ink series. I think that's what it's called. So the hero in this one is actually the alpha of this pack and the heroine wasn't even aware that she was a shifter. So her and her brother were raised completely isolated from the pack or anything to do with supernaturals and the parents are killed and that has something to do with a danger that has to do with the pack and the grandmother brings them into the fold and tells them all these things about who they are and who they'll become but as they are dealing with all of that she also has to deal with the fact that she is the alpha's faded mate. I think that this series probably does faded mates really well for me because I don't like it when it's too insta lovey and forced and caveman style and in this one it wasn't like that. The hero actually has to woo the heroine and make her fall in love with him in order for the bond to actually cement and for it to fully form so I like that about it because it really made them have to connect but I also like the shifter story in general and I think that it had some similarities to Native American culture some of the things of how the shifter 
structure and how the community is set up and how you become a shifter and their spirit animals and all of that so I really enjoyed it and I think it was a different fresh take on shifter romance and I will definitely be reading the next one the next one that I read was American Dreamer by Adriana Herrera. This book comes out in March and it was it's a debut novel. It's a male-male romance and I did rate this two stars. It probably wasn't my favorite. I will be posting my review on the blog for this later on in the month. The next one was Air Kiss by L.H. Cosway. This is a novella and once I started reading it because this is the prequel to the Running on Air series so I really wanted to make sure I read it before I read the first book. I actually realized that I had already read this novella a few years ago. I guess that this might have been something that L.H. Cosway sent out in her newsletter a couple of years ago. So I had already read it, but it was great to refresh my memory. And I did rate this novella four stars. The next one was another Romanceopoly book, and it was my Magic Row book. So I read The Scribe by Elizabeth Hunter. I really enjoyed the like mythology of this story and the setting of this story. I do think that the book was a little bit slow and I don't know if that has something to do with maybe like first book syndrome. I wanted things to move along a little bit faster. I wanted more things to happen. I feel like there was a lot of sitting around doing nothing and just waiting for something to happen or oh, we have to protect her but they're really not doing anything. So. I wanted to maybe dive more into the mythology or more into the action and the danger and I feel like it sort of fell a little short of engaging. However, I did really enjoy the plot and the characters and I will continue the series. I'm not big on the fact that it ends on a cliffhanger so fair warning if you're planning on picking this up this ends on a cliffhanger and you have to read the next book to get the HEA. I don't actually know if it's going to be an HEA that drags on for more books, but for sure the second one will still be this same couple. It didn't leave me itching to read that second book immediately, so it'll probably be a little while before I pick it up. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I rated that three stars. The next one was my reread in the Immortals After Dark series, which was No Rest for the Wicked. Again, I rated that five stars. This is the third time that I read this book. I really adored it. I just love the Roth brothers. So Sebastian, who's the hero in this story, he's a vampire. And Katerin is a Valkyrie. And basically her sole purpose in life is to kill vampires. And she ends up being the fated mate to a vampire. Sebastian is also really adorable. He's a virgin hero and he will basically do anything for his mate. This was a really fun story. Obviously, I already knew what happens in this story, but it was still really fun to revisit. It's been a few years since I read it and it was a lot of fun and it's just left me really excited to get to the next one. The next one was Lady Daring Takes a Lover by Julianne Long. This is the first in the Palace of Rogues series and it's the first time that I read Julianne Long. I think that I've seen a lot of her contemporary romances around. I probably own a few. I think I struggled a little bit with her writing in general. I don't know if that's just because of her writing and historical romance or if it's just her writing style. It did take me a while to get into the story. I think it felt maybe a little stuffy but once I really got into it, I really liked the characters. It was very different. So the heroine's husband recently dies and he's left her with quite the problem because she was not aware that everything they owned was basically on credit. So as soon as he dies, she loses everything and she gets kicked out of their home. And the only thing he's left her that he owned outright was this building by the docks. So she's trying to make the best of that. And while she's doing that, she also finds out that he had a mistress. And he's also left the mistress in quite a bad position. And they sort of form an alliance and a friendship. And they turn that building by the docks into a boarding house. And now the hero of the story was actually investigating her husband for smuggling and selling cigars. And so he thinks that she may still be involved in that. So he's trying to figure out what she's doing at the docks and how was she involved in that scheme and what is going on, who's still getting this stuff out onto the streets. So it was kind of an interesting read. I definitely will be reading the second one because it was set up really nicely in this one, but it was a slow burn. 
Um, so if you're looking for a slow burn historical, then definitely check this one out. It was different, so it's not the typical plot that you see in a historical romance, especially the types of characters that you can find. It was fun in some ways, it was romantic in some ways. I think that it does take a little while to warm up to it, but once you do, you're really interested in the story, and I ended up rating this 3.5. Next one was The Something About Her by Rachel Higgins, and I rated this four stars, and it's the fourth book, I think, in the Opposites of Track series. It's a foodie romance, the heroine is a chef. She's also half-sister of the owner of several restaurants in town and he basically gives her the executive chef position at one of his struggling restaurants and although she's earned that position by really working her way up through some of the other restaurants a lot of people maybe think that she just got the job because of who she is and her family connection so she has a lot to prove to others as well as to herself. She also always seemed to be a very free-spirited and fun-loving kind of character and it was really interesting to see that she was hiding so much inside of her and this book may be triggering for some people. In particular one scene that even though it's not something I've experienced I found it was well done in the sense that it made you really feel what the heroine was going through but at the same time it could be triggering for somebody that has gone through this so maybe read some reviews I don't want to spoil it in this video but maybe read some reviews and try to see if it's something that you should avoid the hero is a straight laced hero and I really like that about it because I think that it was the perfect couple to put together and especially I think that he was the perfect guy to help her get through some of the things that she had to open up about and overcome so it ended up being an unexpected emotional read and I really enjoyed it. The next one I read was On Thin Ice by Julie Cross. This is a young adult contemporary. I have read a previous book in this series and the thing that stood out about that one is that it did make some more serious topics in with the romance, especially being that it's set in high school. And I think this one had its issues. It felt like it dragged a little bit. The heroine is new in town. Her mother has mental health issues and she's struggling with that. She's They're both living at home with their grandmother and they had to move in with her grandmother and move from Texas to, I can't remember where this book is set, but they had to move to a different state after her father went to jail. So her father is in jail. We don't know right away what happened or what he went to jail for but it definitely disrupted her whole family life her mom is suffering for, because of that and she's still dealing with a lot of issues from that I think that the author maybe brushed off some of those and didn't really dive in deep and serious enough about some of her past and that may just be that she was trying to pack too many subjects into one book because already the main plot of this book is that the hero is part of the hockey team and and there's a hazing ritual gone really bad that happens and from that there's a lot of issues that come up and in a way the heroine is actually the one helping him get through that and at the same time he's helping her open up and I think that it was maybe too much to put into one book. Some of those issues were not developed well enough or deep enough, while at the same time the pacing felt like it was a little slow. I ended up reading this three stars, but I'm not sure that I would read another book in this series. So another one that I read was Grave Witch by Kalina Price. I rated that 3.5 stars, mm -hmm. and it's the first in the Alex Craft series. It does have to do with witches. She's a grave witch, obviously, and there's a lot of ghosts and fae. Um, I like the setup. I think that it was a little slow and kind of... I don't want to say hard to get into, but it was hard to keep my attention. It did take me about a week to get through the book just because I wanted to put that one down to read something else. However, overall, in the end, I ended up liking her as a main character and I do like the setup of the world, so I am interested to continue reading the series and finding out more. I'm definitely interested to continue reading the series, but it started off just a tiny bit slow for me. 
And last we have Off the Air by L.H. Cosway, which I am almost done reading, so I will probably finish reading that when I finish editing this video. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about this one, just because I haven't finished it yet. However, what we've seen so far is probably a little bit less character development that I would have wanted to see, and the pacing is a little slower also than I would have liked to have seen. So. I can't say that so far it's one of my favorite books by L.H. Cosway, but I have hopes that it will turn it around. And that's it. That's the 20 books that I read this month. Let me know down in the comments below what you read, what you loved, and what you're looking forward to reading in the month of March. I'm pretty excited I get to go away on vacation in March, so I plan on reading all the things. Keep your fingers crossed for me. I will leave links in the information box down below for all the books that I talked about today and also down below you'll find links to all our social media channels so come and follow us there if you'd like and on the blog at undercoversbookblog.com. Thanks so much for watching guys and again we'll see you in the next video. Bye!